Well, today here in the Philippines, this little box right here is all the buzz. Yeah, Starlink. All the buzz today in the Philippines because they announced that it has went live for the Philippines and is now going to be sold here in the Philippines. So let me tell you why I already have this here in the Philippines. Let me tell you a little bit about um, how I've been using it and maybe you might want to jump in there and buy yourself a Starlink system. In August of 2022, we returned back from Texas, USA to the Philippines. And my Starlink account is a RV mobile account that I bought there in the United States. So I put it in my suitcase and I brought it here to the Philippines, even though it was not quote active live and did not have a real thick network of satellites up above. It did work here nonetheless. I wanted it because our carrier like PLDT and before them Globe constantly had outages. And we still have PLDT, great company. Actually, I like them a lot. Their fiber is really wonderful. But we have outages, and we've had outage right now for several days. And sometimes getting someone out to get that repaired is not always easy. Well, we're running a YouTube channel, and daily uploads and handling business and everything is very important for us. So if we miss getting a video out there, my Starlink service is um, covered the whole month by not missing even one video. And I would have missed already now three, possibly four videos if it wasn't for the fact that I have Starlink. So now let's cover a little bit of how it's working now and we'll talk about my past videos. So when I brought this here in August of 2022, the service sometimes would have gaps, the latency was really poor, I was connecting to a ground station far away, like all the way down far in Australia. And then as time went on and they kept deploying satellites and deploying satellites, we end up without the gaps like where you might all of a sudden be buffering and waiting another satellite pass over and you would get service again and it would go good for a while and then there might be a gap again because there wasn't enough satellites in the constellation. But there is now. And now I don't have any gaps and the latency has extremely improved and the speed, everything overall, the whole service has improved greatly since back in August when I first brought it here. Just a tremendous difference. So we're going to do a little bit of screenshots of me going in and doing some speed tests and all. I'll take you up to the rooftop. You can see my unit setting there. And let's see what it's doing here right now. It's about 10 o'clock at night here in the Philippines on Panay Island, just outside of Iloilo in the Western Visayas region. Let's go check it out. So here it is at nighttime. We're going to head up on the ladder here. And there's a little concrete roof deck up here. And here is my satellite dish. Now I don't have it bolted down or weighted down at the moment. Uh, the weather's pretty good. It's not in its permanent location or anything. I kind of like keeping it mobile. But you could lay some sandbags or something right there on the legs to keep it from blowing or moving around when you have it like this. Just lay your sandbag and lay your sandbag. So you see it just repositioned itself right when we're talking. And it's lined itself up apparently on another satellite. You see that? And I want to tell you a little bit about how this works. This is not like your typical satellite dish, just say like um, Sky or in the US like Direct TV or Dish Network or all these different um, signal, all of those different ones like back here in the Philippines that point at a fixed satellite. This unit, the way that this is made inside, this is a very complicated board inside right here. Um, that it is actually locked in to a whole plethora of satellites at one time. It is over a broad spectrum. It is not simply following one satellite and then wait for another one to come in view. Now I did have to do a little bit of searching when the constellation of satellites was spread out and it would have to wait for another one to come back in view again. But they're thick enough up there now 
that it's pretty much staying in contact with one at all times. So as one's fading away, another one's coming in, it's doing handoffs. Um, it's a very, very well designed system. Kudos, kudos to Elon Musk and Starlink. And I do want to follow up there that you do not have to use this mount right here. You can actually put a permanent mount on your house. There is um, extra items that you can order when you order your system if there's different mountings that you want. Now this cable right here is fixed and it is a very long cable. Um, in fact, it's up three stories higher right now than where my box is. And it shows no obstructions right there. All clear view up here where I'm at. So there you see right there. It's pretty good speed, 221. Uh, with 26 upload, that's pretty nice. Uh, 79 on the milliseconds on latency. Um, now, you got to understand, the people that's probably going to buy this, they're going to be people that's out far away from like fiber optic services and they're just on cell phone services and even it's hard to get and really slow. So... The target market for Starlink is the people that are unserved. If you're only looking about you're wanting to play Mobile Legends and gaming, it's probably not your service. If you're wanting to do your business and watch TV, um, Netflix, streaming, YouTube, get on your laptop, get on your cell phone, look stuff up, do all those things out there, it works great. If you're just a dedicated gamer, it's probably not your thing if you're that hardcore into it. But it is a great service for the people that are unserved. And that's the main thing that Starlink's looking for is the underserved and the unserved people that are out in all these remote areas, just like you're in the Philippines, all these islands and far out province places and all that are unserved by companies uh, with cable and fiber type services. Now I do wanna have this little uh, disclosure and disclaimer here. My service, when I brought it from the United States, my system, I bought it and brought it with me from the United States on a Starlink RV mobile account that I could even take international. And so they put some limits on me that you are buying it and fixed at a location at your home, you're a new buyer here in the Philippines or wherever you're watching this from and you're not on an RV account, um, you're going to probably get better speeds than even I am now um, and guaranteed to keep better speeds because you're gonna get prioritized first. RV accounts, we're kind of, uh, we get the leftovers. <laughs> They put priority to the customers that are on fixed locations. So if you buy your system here in the Philippines and they come out and they install it for you or you install it yourself or however that's going to work here in the Philippines, I'm not sure yet, but it's real simple to do yourself. You really don't need anybody. Well, you're going to have a fixed address location with Starlink and you're probably going to get way better service than I'm showing right now. 
I really want to disclose that. I'm going to continue to keep mine as an RV account because if I decide I want to go back to the U.S. and spend a few months there or spend a couple weeks there or anything, I can just throw it in my suitcase, take it with me, get it out, boom, I have instant internet, really strong internet. I want to get in my truck and travel the United States and pop up and upload videos and all. I have my service wherever I'm at. If I want to take my boat out here, my Sea Rig cabin cruiser out on the water, I can also take it out there and have service wherever I'm at. So that's why I am going to choose to keep mine on a mobile account. But I'm paying considerably more money on a mobile account than what you're going to be paying on a fixed account here in the Philippines with this new launch service. So. Um, look into them. Apparently they've went live. There's all kinds of stories out there on it right now. They've got a, a way better price point than what I'm paying for an RV account. I could possibly migrate mine from being a RV account to a fixed account right here in the Philippines and get my bill down lower. And then when I travel abroad, I can get them to convert it back over to an international. That is a possibility. Well, I can tell you this, I really love my service with it. It's been a great, reliable service. Um, if my PLDT fiber was ever going down on us or anything, I said, no problem, I got Starlink, you know, it's, it's like the good old pal right there. So it's been reliable and it's been nothing but improving, improving, and improving. So if you watch some of my earlier videos of me using it and, and traveling and getting it on uh, out and using it on Romlin Island and different things back in like in October and all, took it with me up to Lausanne, up at Lake Calorai, up in the mountains, used it there, uploaded videos, did all my work and everything. Um, it worked then, but not as good as it works now. Starlink has got the system up and going and all it's going to do is just improve, improve, improve. If you like what I shared here tonight, uh, put a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Um, give me a thumbs up if you would. If you want to follow more updates on my service as I use it out in other locations and going to be using it out on the boat in the water, subscribe to me. Hit that notification bell so you'll know when I'm putting an update out there on it and the other things that go on our lives as well that might entertain you too. Everybody, take care, God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.